everyone. I'm Erin Carswell, Forens VP Exploration. And as always, I'm thrilled to be able to bring you some new results for the Tesla Zone. This time, 15 new drill holes. It's the final results of our winter 2025 uh, drill program on the Tesla Zone. And before we get into the results, I just want to say how proud I am of my team for what we managed to achieve this year. You know, we did have our biggest drill program ever in Forens history with nine drill rigs at one point turning on the ice. So it was a huge undertaking, but one that we pulled off seamlessly in an effort to get the intersections that we need for Tesla. There are 15 new holes in the accompanying press release. I'm only really going to talk about three of them in this short video, but it'll give you a flavour of what we're thinking and where we're going with a little bit of future drilling that we need to do at Tesla as well. Now, we do actually have right now two drill rigs turning on Tesla for the summer program. As most of you know, we normally need to drill on frozen lake ice, but there's a small land peninsula where we can put a couple of rigs in the summer months. And so we're testing some pretty important holes there that we'll talk about towards the end of this video as well. Now, we'll start out at the claim scale, looking at Foran's tenements here in Saskatchewan, not far from the Flin Flon area. We'll zoom straight in though to the McElvenna Bay project in the north here. Now this project, as most of you will know, is under construction. It's our flagship project. McElvenna Bay itself was discovered in 1988, so it's incredibly exciting, not just for Foran, but for the entire communities in this area that this project is finally coming online. And Tesla was only discovered in 2022, so it's relatively new. But as you can see, with all the drilling that we've been doing, it's shaping up into kind of comparable size in some ways, in terms of surface projection, at least. Now we'll drop under the ground here. One thing I want to point out immediately, and I'll grab my little colour um, highlighter here, is that Macavetta Bay, which are these grey shells here, with you can see the paler grey hole traces and copper equivalent assays going into to those shells. This is showing resource shells. So these are shells that have gone through a proper resource geology process. They have economic parameters included and they've been clipped to that with the drilling density to support it. What we have for Tesla on the other hand here are still mineralized interpretations. So these are not resource shells yet and the resource shells that we do eventually release may look a little bit different. But what they are based on is geological interpretation, current drilling, or holy M and all the different factors that play into the interpretation of the lenses for us at this stage. As you can see, the holes towards the northwestern end of Tesla are getting fairly deep. We don't intend to chase Tesla much further down plunge. That can be something that can be done from underground later. But what we do want to do is get a good enough handle in terms of a resource on Tesla uh, that we can build that into future studies and planning. So that's the aim of, of the working towards the future resource uh, for this mineralized zone. So as I said, there were 15 drill holes that we're putting out with this current release. We're only going to talk about three of them. So starting with 37 Wedge 2, and this was a really important hole for us because it was the the kind of the third hole drilled from the same parent and the first two holes of that series were some of the thickest intersections that we'd seen across foreign sentiments and the thickest ones into Tesla so far. So if you recall uh, TS37, it hit multiple thickened intersections over about 143 metres of really nice uh, copper and zinc grades. 37 wedge 1 hit a 70 metre intersection of beautiful continuous mineralisation. And finally, we've got 37 wedge 2 a little bit further down dip. And you can see here that it's come back down to kind of normal Tesla thicknesses here, but the grades are still fantastic. So we'll start up with the copper 1 lens. Now, this one is normally quite a thin lens that sits directly on top of the main lens. Here it has a metre at 0.8% copper, nearly 4% zinc, 180 grams. Uh, silver and two grams gold. Now that's a lot more gold than we typically see in this lens and more zinc for that matter as well. You go down into the main lens and you get 8.1 metres running nearly 1.9% copper, 11.5% zinc, 81 grams silver and nearly 1.7 grams gold. So again this is more elevated copper than we would typically see in the main lens further up dip or in the rest of Tesla and definitely more elevated gold. So it's about four or five times the amount of gold that we would typically see in the main lens. In trying to understand this, I'll just swing to the next slide here. One thing we decided to do was plot up the grade thickness of copper over the main lens. But we wanted to look at what, what are the copper grades doing within that zinc rich main lens. And when we plot up grade thickness, you can see a real spatial story emerging here. Now, just to explain grade thickness quickly for those who might not have used it before, we basically take the grade of a, of a composite intersection and multiply it by the thickness of that intersection. And what that gives you is a number that doesn't really have units, but it does give you an approximation of the amount of metal in the systems. And you can see some pretty clear spatial trends in this data. You do have this distinct trend 
in higher grade thickness for copper. So it does seem to form this shoot across the mainland there. It's interesting because when we think about where we go next, where there's any further expansion required at Tesla, this is obviously the direction that we want to be going in for copper. Okay, so we're starting to see that some of these lower holes that we drill along that bottom edge of Tesla, not even just the main lens, by the way, the lower lens as well shows the same trend. We're starting to see higher copper grades and higher gold grades as we get deeper in these lenses that are typically very zinc rich. So something a bit different happening as we zone down and step out down dip. Anyway, we'll swing around to a section because I wanted to again reinforce how close we are now to that thickened real kind of heart and soul of Tesla here where we had those warping intersections that we've already released and you can see here that Tesla 37 wedge 2 this guy that I'm circling in red which was not the best color choice but I'm sure you can see it you can see that the thicknesses go back to typical Tesla but again I've got the same grades displayed there um, the grades remain elevated so it's still a really important area for us We'll swing back to the Tesla scale here and that was the section on the far right that we were just looking at and we'll now look at the section in the middle for 43 wedge 1. So we'll swing around here and you can see that on this drill section you see a hole at a fairly odd angle and that hole, the one that's almost vertical there, is hole TS2203. Now I did mention that Tesla was only discovered in 2022 so this was actually one of the early discovery holes for Tesla. Drilled at a terrible angle because at that point we didn't know what dip Tesla had in you know to the to the east to the west nothing so in the end we drilled straight down the main lens and we knew we needed to come back and drill at an appropriate angle to get true thickness for that mineralization so that we could feed that into the resource. And we did end up hitting some really nice mineralization there. So once again, the copper one lens, we had nearly a meter at sitting directly on top of the main lens there, which is 7.9 meters thick with a little bit of copper. Typical copper in the main lens hovers around this kind of 0.3, 0.4%. But here we've got beautiful zinc. So we've got nearly 10.5% zinc and a little bit of silver as well. And finally, that went down into quite a thick copper two lens just over 17 meters running 1.4 percent copper a bit under a percent zinc and a bit of silver again so really nice to finally get the true thickness of what was happening with the mineralization in this part of tesla and you can see there's a bit more infill drilling required to follow that down Now we're going to have a quick look at BZ2502 wedge 1. Now this was a hole that was originally intended to test the bridge zone but we did actually make a beautiful Tesla intersection in this hole and again with some really nice copper. So we'll swing into the assays and the cross section here. So it's this hole here that comes down through Tesla, did hit the bridge zone as well in the end, stopped just short of McElvena Bay down here. But the results from Tesla were well worth it. So once again, a meter of the copper one lens, I'm sensing a theme here, sitting directly on top of eight meters of the main lens. Now it's not as zinc rich as further, you know, uh, to the north in Tesla here. We've got about 0.7% copper and nearly two and a half percent zinc in the main lens there. But what got us really excited here was the copper two lens. So we're looking at 16.5 meters running at 2.2% copper, uh, nearly 1.4% zinc and a little bit of silver as well. So what we want to do is follow this copper. So down this southern end of Tesla, there are about four holes in a row that line up that all have really nice copper grades in the copper two lens and nothing beyond that. So as in we haven't drilled. So what we need to be able to do and uh, what we'll hopefully be doing next year is stepping out in small increments to try and chase this copper two lens with the elevated copper grades. We'll swing back out now to the big scale stage again. And the reason I'm showing this is to remind everyone of where that borehole EM plate was that we identified this year. You can see it there in blue. And what I'm gonna show you next are the summer drilling traces now. We've got two drill rigs out there, like I said, on a land peninsula, putting some holes into the northwestern end of Tesla, which is the area that we can reach from those drill pads. And you can see them here with the purple traces. So three of the holes are intended to really hit the top edge of that borehole EM plate and infill that gap there. What you can also see, and I may have to spin it around a little bit here, is that we're putting three more holes a little bit further along the Tesla strike here. And that's these guys. And those are in what we call the Higgs area. So that's where we made some really nice intersections up the northwest end of Tesla a couple of years ago. 
and we've actually reused that collar. So when we're thinking about capital efficiency in drilling a deposit like Tesla, if we can go down and not have to drill the pre-collar for these daughter holes, gosh, it can save us a thousand meters, right? So it's a very efficient way to go back and drill a couple of directional, in this case, three directional holes back off the same parent and get more interceptions and more bang for our buck. So in terms of what that looks like in section view, you can see that not only are we hoping to hit the Tesla main lens, which is this upper one that you can see here, but we're hoping to hit this lower lens and the EM plate and really confirm that. Anyway, it's very exciting. We have a lot going on as always at the project and in our exploration team. In addition to all the drilling, uh, we're not forgetting regional exploration. We have soil sampling going on at the moment, covering huge grids south of Macalvetta Bay. We're working on a regional prospectivity report that's going to be the foundation for everything we want to do in the future in terms of making new discoveries. So while we finish off the Tesla Resource Drill Program, we're already thinking about what's next. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. As always, it's a pleasure and uh, wish us luck. Thanks so much. Bye.